One of the exciting things that the internet has enabled is this idea of remixes. I can take thickly with music, I can take little bits of a bunch of different things and smash them together to create something new. Um, and, you know, in some ways this is, uh, you know, an artifact of the digital age. It's much easier to manipulate things. It's much easier to take pieces of, of uh, art or uh, pieces of writing, tear them apart, pull them into little pieces, and then actually put those things back into a new form. Um, uh, however, this type of um, engagement with the world around us and engagement with content has existed for a long time. Um, probably one of my favorite pieces on this that I think should be sort of required reading for, for all computer scientists is this essay by Jonathan Lethem called The Ecstasy of Influence. So clearly I'm not going to read this. This is a long essay, but I would encourage you to. Um, it's fascinating. And, and, and the, the highlight here is the sense that for decades and decades, going back hundreds if not thousands of years, um, creators have existed in a world where they are responding to mashing up and creating you know, somewhat derivative, if not new versions of previous works. So lots of famous pieces of art and literature can't be said to be actually original because if you look carefully, you can easily find precedents for them that their authors may or may not have been directly aware of. Maybe their authors were only sort of subconsciously aware of a particular thing. Maybe they read it when they were in grade school and they totally forgot about it, and then they reproduced it in a much more famous and a much more effective form. The thing that's tricky about the internet and our digital age is that, um, unfortunately, not only has it made it easier to remix things and to sort of participate um, in what people like Larry Lessig would call read-write culture. It's supposed to read-only culture. So what's read-only culture? Read-only culture is this idea that you just sit back and take it. You know, sit in front of the television, watch that content, just let it be streamed at you. You're passive, you're read-only. Read-write is you take that, you absorb it, and then you produce something new. You take that, you reform it, you remix it, you produce something uh, that's derivative, but it also has its own value. Now, the problem with the internet is not only has it made that more possible, but it's also made it easier for content owners sometimes to detect that you've done that and come after you for it. And so there are many, many sad cases of this. So for example, one of my favorite songs is um, uh, Bittersweet Symphony by The Verve, right? For a fantastic band, underappreciated. Uh, you should go listen to all their stuff. It's great. Um, but it turns out that the, the Bittersweet Symphony, which is the first track off one of their albums, is apparently no longer owned by The Verve because in producing that song, they sampled a piece of music by another band. Um, is the piece of music that they sampled in any way responsible for how fantastic that song is? No, not at all. No way. But the band sued them, won rights to the song, and now inarguably one of their better, if not most famous songs, is owned uh, by, by another band. So does that make any sense? Is that right? Is that um, something that would be similar to you know, decades and decades and centuries in which people responded to things like that and came up with works that were highly derivative and yet we had this incredible flowering of culture? Uh, no way. So at some level, you know, the internet has been a boon for people being able to create remixes uh, and, and create new things that are derivative of old things. But in certain cases, we've also seen a chilling effect where the ability um, for people to use digital media to directly and accurately identify places where parts of things that they've created have been reused uh, has created lawsuits and that's caused people to be a little bit more careful about what they actually do use to create new things.